Hi everyone, Cody here, and welcome back to my lab. So, as promised, today I'll be working on my mercury waste. See, this is some mercury nitrate, which is dissolved in water, which is incredibly toxic, and I really don't have a use for it, and so I'll be converting it into less toxic mercury metal. This video is actually inspired by a video that my friend Niall Red did when he was doing something very similar. He was treating his mercury waste into a form that was less toxic. Uh, he converted it into mercury sulfide, which is fine because mercury sulfide is a naturally occurring mineral. It's incredibly insoluble in water. It's not very toxic in that form. But in order to turn the mercury sulfide into mercury metal, you would have to roast it, which releases the mercury vapors, which you could condense into mercury metal for, by use of a still. Something I've done before, but of course, I have a much simpler method of forming the mercury metal directly from this. And to do that, I will use a simple single displacement reaction. Unreactive metals such as silver really want to be in their metallic state, whereas copper is fairly okay being a salt. To explain this reaction, say you have two people sitting on an airplane. One is sitting in the aisle seat and one is sitting next to the window. The person who's sitting next to the window, let's say they're afraid of heights and have a small bladder. The person sitting in the aisle seat, they love looking out windows, they love the thrill of heights, and they're okay holding their pee. Those two people would be very likely to switch places. In fact, any time you have a more reactive metal in solution and a less reactive metal at solid, those two metals will switch places. Which means if I add a reactive metal to the solution, that metal will dissolve and metallic mercury will form. Here's a little chart showing the metals listed in order of reactivity, more reactive ones at the top. Those will replace ones below it. Now copper will work. Uh, mercury is definitely less reactive than copper. Uh, aluminum will not. The aluminum can actually react with hydrogen in the water, or dihydrogen monoxide, forming hydrogen gas and aluminum oxide. Normally aluminum does not replace hydrogen because of a pacifying coating of aluminum oxide, but mercury of course disrupts that. So you may see a small amount of mercury metal form, but the aluminum will react with the water and be quickly consumed. Thus the efficiency will be incredibly low. But if you choose the right metals, you can be very selective as to which ones you replace. But before I get to that, I wanted to point something out. You see, this is not a tabletop. Uh, many people were complaining in the last video that this uh, I was spilling mercury out on the table and I was going to contaminate my lab for all an eternity. Well, this is just a piece of wood, as you can see, that is sitting inside of a plastic dish, which is, of course, on a table itself. <clears throat> this makes it so that if I spill anything on here, it gets captured inside of the dish and I can easily clean it up. So, just, just something to point out there. So here is where I'm set up to perform the reaction. You can see I'm using a glass beaker sitting on some blocks, and this is just because I wanted to film this with my time-lapse camera. Normally I would do the reaction just inside of the jug. You may have also noticed, because of the echo, that I'm doing this inside of a underground room which doesn't get very much traffic. I don't want someone to come and knock this over accidentally. This is what I'll be using for the reducing agent, just some strips of thick copper wire. Now normally I would use a wad of bare copper scrap, but like I've said, this is a special occasion and I wanted this to look nice. So now I'm going to add the mercury nitrate solution to the beaker and I'm going to rinse out the jug a few times with some more distilled water. Just to be sure that I get as much of the mercury out of this jug as possible. Now this solution probably contains an excess of nitric acid, so the pH will be rather low, but that's alright, as I'm using an excess of copper metal. And in fact, that's what I like about this reaction. The copper will replace the mercury with a wide range of conditions. Look at that, you can already see the mercury forming on the surface of the copper. Isn't that cool? Once the copper is done replacing all of the mercury, I'll be left with a copper nitrate solution and I can replace the copper from the solution using a chunk of steel. Some of you may ask, why don't I just start with a piece of steel? Well, steel is reactive enough, it'll precipitate the mercury out just fine, right? Also, steel has the added benefit of not dissolving into the mercury, because steel doesn't react with mercury, the way as copper will. Now, let me show you what happens if you do use steel. You wind up with something that looks a bit like this. This uh, grayish-white powder is floured mercury. 
It's essentially mercury powder, and it is very difficult to get back into a liquid form. Sometimes you can get it to go back by adding a strong acid or a base. One way to get it to go back is to add some copper powder to it. The mercury droplets will absorb onto the copper, forming larger masses which stick together. Which, uh, well, is kind of why this will form liquid mercury directly. That's how it works. Fortunately though, the amount of copper that actually dissolves in mercury is quite small, and the liquid mercury formed is usable for most purposes. Of course, if you need extremely pure mercury, well, you're going to have to distill it. Nile Red also has a video about distilling mercury, which I will show a clip of here on the screen, as well as a link to it in the description. Look at that, I can see some droplets of mercury already forming at the bottom. So here we are about 12 hours later, and you can see that a puddle of mercury has formed in the bottom of the glass, which is exactly what I wanted. Now the solution probably still has some mercury in it. I usually let it go a couple of weeks before I feel confident enough to call the uh, liquid mercury free, but you guys get the point. I'm actually going to cut this short because this lamp, which I've been using for lighting, is causing the glass to heat up and the water to evaporate. That's not going to cause it to lose any mercury, but as you can see, that's quite a bit evaporated in just 12 hours. If I were to leave this here for a week, it would go completely dry. So I will uh, turn this lamp off, but that kind of ruins the video. So. There you go. But yeah, you can see that I've got my liquid mercury. Looks like if I shake this around a bit, I can collect it all together into a single bit. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.